Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. It's been a while since we had the mailbag video, so let's get started. First, I have these three sensors. They are all proximity sensors and are part of my uh, plan to upgrade the uh, CR10 3D printer with automatic uh, bed leveling. As you may know from a previous video, I failed to do that with the uh, first sensor I got, which was an inductive uh, sensor and had 8mm sensing distance. It looked similar to this one, but it functioned in a different uh, way. I failed because the glass sheet I'm using takes away from my clearance, so 8mm wasn't enough for the sensor to pick up the aluminium bed and still get enough clearance from the uh, glass sheet which sits between. So I ordered this one which is a uh, capacitive uh, sensor. This one should be able to sense even the glass surface uh, thus giving me a greater range. And I've quickly tested it and it works great. I get increased range so the nozzle uh, can touch the glass while the sensor is still way above it. So I'll probably end up using this one. The uh, Here is the part number. It's LJC18A3-H-ZBX. Uh, there is still some t uh, more testing to be done to see if it uh, actually works okay with the software and in practice. But in terms of range, this one is the, the one you want to get, the capacitive type sensor. I've also got these other two as backup because, well, it took more than two months to receive these. So I wanted to make sure that I get at least one that does the job. These have a different style of uh, package than this one and will require a different uh, mounting technique. But I think uh, Creality uses one like this for the CR10S with the auto bed leveling function. So I'm sure you could find some um, uh, mounts for these ready-made on uh, Thingiverse. I'll probably do a video soon and uh, compare uh, these uh, sensors between them and I will show you how well they detect proximity to the printing surface with my particular case where I use a uh, sheet of glass. Until then, if you want to place some uh, orders, there will be links for these in the description below the video. My next item is a small module that I first spotted on another YouTube channel uh, on Adam Welch's channel. The module looked interesting so I ordered one. It basically combines a lithium battery charging circuit with a step-up DC to DC converter to offer you a more uh, compact solution. Because there are multiple scenarios where you work with a, uh, a lithium cell but you also need a 5 volts rail for example. However, the module does not have uh, any protection for the cell so you could over discharge the cell if you don't monitor the uh, lithium cell voltage. I did find a picture online where it showed a uh, second module that has the uh, protection features. So now I'm thinking why not combine that also to have a true all-in-one module that can charge, step up the voltage and protect the cell at the same time. The uh, charging IC is marked uh, 4056 so it could be the classical TP4056 or a variation of that but the layout doesn't seem right to me. Here is a close-up picture of the module and uh, here is the datasheet of the TP4056. As we can see pin 3 should be ground but in our case pin 2 is ground and there is this line uh, there is this inline resistor with pin 1 I'm not sure what's going on here maybe you guys know more so please leave a comment below these uh, next two items are kind of regulars on the show and uh, I'll show you why here I have a uh, DigiSpark uh, clone module and an Arduino Nano. These are like uh, consumables, at least uh, for me. They are very cheap and they either get given away uh, to a friend that needs one or they get used in uh, some of my uh, own projects. For example, I used my last uh, DigiSpark to uh, make a flashing LED strip for my flying wing to be able to see it better when it's uh, in the air. 
I know it's overkill to do that, but it allowed me to adjust the flashing frequency to my liking and it was I was also able to do it very quickly. So that's how I use these things like uh, consumables. The uh, DigiSpark module comes at least in two shapes that I know of. This is the one with a micro USB connector and there is also the other one shaped like a USB key that you can directly plug into a USB port and it will have a bootloader in there to program it without the need of an external programmer. So I recommend these as a quick and cheap way to get a project done uh, for something that needs just a few IOs this is perfect. Next I got some tools. I have this uh, spudger. Let me get it out of uh, its packaging. So it feels kind of heavy. It feels like it's uh, a metal spudger. It has these uh, thin ends but they uh, feel quite uh, strong so I'm pretty sure they are metal. You would use this for uh, prying open uh, like various enclosures. I keep a good selection of spudgers because these days it's often the case for enclosures to be clipped tight together and you can't really open them without uh, something like this that you can slip between the different parts of the enclosures. And this is just a uh, cheap precision knife. I tend to get a new one when I start a new project because they're so cheap. I will need this one for a new RC plane project. Uh, I'm building a new plane and uh, I will be laminating its foam with uh, some laminating film and a sharp precision knife is needed to cut all the different uh, parts from the laminating film. Next item is a uh, micro SD extension cable. I got this for my uh, 3D printer. Like mentioned before, I like printing from the SD card, but the uh, slot on the CR10 control box, it's kind of hard to access and you might want to protect that slot from uh, prematurely failing. So the idea is to plug this extension cable in the slot and you, you can get these in, in different lengths. This one is about 15 centimeters. And then you plug the SD card on this end which uh, should be easier to access and if this ever fails it will be a simple to uh, a simple job to replace this cable as opposed to finding the the right sd card connector that they've used on the motherboard and soldering in a new connector so i think it's a pretty good idea to use something like this uh, if you use the sd card a lot and if you're interested in getting one uh, you'll find a link in the description below if you remember the Anang uh, 8008 and, and 8009 multimeter and the uh, teardown videos, it, uh, they use some uh, very small fuses for protection in those meters. Uh, they use this kind of fuse, 3.6 millimeter by 10 millimeter fuse, and they are not as easy to find as other more common uh, sizes. So I found these on eBay. They are 200 milliamps, 250 volts rated. Uh, and this set was uh, $1.60 with free shipping and you get 10 pieces inside. The 200 milliamp fuse will probably require replacement uh, more often so I only got uh, these ones. Unfortunately the product listing showed a normal fuse but what I actually got is one with leads that it's meant to be soldered on a PCB. There were other listings that show these uh, fuses with leads, probably even cheaper, but I didn't order from those because I wanted to get the model without leads. But the seller didn't seem to care about uh, what he lists on the product page. So let's see if maybe we can uh, remove the, the leads as these are usually like a cap which is uh, crimped on the end. Probably destroy one of the fuses in the process but we will learn if it's possible to remove this or not. Nope, it doesn't really want to come off. So I guess ultimately what I could do is just... Uh, oh yeah, you saw it does come out. But uh, you do really need to use uh, a bit of force. And I'm wondering if 
this will uh, damage the fuse in any way because I'm applying quite a bit of force but another solution would be to try to just uh, cut the lead off and uh, maybe even with this increased wedge in here maybe the fuse will slip into the fuse holder so I'll have to see about that but I'm pretty sure I can make it uh, work if I uh, ever find myself in uh, trouble with a blown fuse on my anning meters but just something to be aware with when you order these maybe ask the seller before if the fuse are like uh, in the picture they show on the product listing and the last item in today's video a uh, mini iron the box uh, as you can see did take a beating during uh, shipping but I checked and the item is okay as you can see it uh, really is a uh, mini iron about the uh, size of my palm and it even has a small thermostat to regulate the temperature it says on the box that it should go up to uh, 150 degrees maybe maximum 200 degrees and it's rated for both 110 and 220 volts but I'm guessing it uh, will take longer to heat up on uh, 110 volt you can see they shipped uh, mine with this uh, adapter I hate these uh, adapters so I'll probably uh, cut this plug and uh, connect a uh, new European plug I uh, needed this for my RC airplane project for laminating um, some film to the foam surface there are some dedicated irons for doing exactly that but I noticed they sell for about 30 bucks so I tried to look for something cheaper and uh, I found this on Aliexpress for just under $8 with free shipping I don't know how well it will do the job because I have no uh, experience with uh, laminating whatsoever but it looks like it uh, could work I was also thinking you could use this to maybe uh, reflow some uh, surface mount uh, uh, PCBs but since it only goes up to 150 degrees Celsius that would not be possible unless you replace the um, uh, thermostat and make it go higher in temperature but not sure it's going to, uh, to survive temperatures higher than that it might not be built for that uh, the plastics might melt so it might destroy itself if you modify it not really electronics related but uh, it could be in some cases so I thought I'd uh, show it uh, to you guys maybe it gives you an idea or something that was uh, all for today as usual links to all the uh, items shown in the video will be placed in the description below the video let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you next time